You get the idea. I can't do it with one hand. Ow. Welcome to the workshop. Welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be talking about the Mark VI. This is a really long-awaited video. Um, I'm finally making an update video on what I have printed, what I've been doing with the Mark VI. And uh, yeah, uh, this might be a long one, so sit back, grab a snack, take your socks off. What? Just, just enjoy the video. Um, I don't know if it will be long, but I feel like it will because I have a lot to talk about. So first I have something in order to talk about. Um, as you can see, this is not my normal recording space. I recently kind of took over the basement. So this has become kind of like my recording room. Um, so you'll see a lot of uh, review videos and bigger update videos down here, um, just because there's more space and just, yeah, it's, it's, a, little bit, it's a little less crowded than the uh, workshop upstairs. So get used to seeing this space. Um, I'm gonna decorate it back here, don't worry. It's gonna look less pathetic very soon. Let's get into the video. So first things first, we have my Mark VI helmet. This was the first thing I actually finished uh, because I like to jump the gun and I like to do stuff like this way before I even start the whole build. Don't do this. You wanna make sure it fits first. You wanna make sure it works with everything. Don't jump the gun, even though it is fun and I do it a lot. Don't take my advice in this sense. But yeah, this is, uh, I've talked about this a lot in um, my Instagram posts and probably on YouTube. I don't remember if I have yet, but this is my crown jewel. Um, the shine alone on this thing is incredible. I actually kind of stole Frank's uh, painting technique, um, which you can find on his Instagram, but I'll talk about it here as well. This is a, um, okay, so I started with a chrome base coat. Um, right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you not to do that. Um, I, it came, it, it brought up a lot of painting issues uh, down the road. This red flakes off extremely easily because of that, so don't do that. Um, but I did a chrome base coat with gold on top of this, this exact gold. And then I hit it with Duplicolor Metalcast Red. And this stuff, this, it's, you can't go wrong with it. Um, you wanna spray it in really light coats. I do have some drippage, drippage, is that a word? I have drippage, dripping, dripping paint, paint drips along the, uh, the edges of the helmet because I think I went a little too heavy, but I also had some painting issues due to the chrome coat. So, um, yeah, those are two things to be aware of. I also did not clear coat the gold because I really like the shine of it. Considering it, but I probably won't do it unless I need to, like on the arms, for example, where the paint will scratch. Um, and then I went over this with airbrush. I do have some clips of this. I'll put over um, this video while I talk about it. And I was planning on making a whole helmet video, which may come after this because um, I went over like motorization and stuff. Um, so keep an eye out for that as well. But yeah, I airbrushed on the battle damage. I pre-modeled this in Blender. This is Jack 3D on Instagram. This is his model. It's a great model. And then I also cut off his chin. So this, this piece right here will move. And I'm working on the mechanism for that. Uh, if you can tell, you can look in. You can see there's a servo right up here. And I'm starting to work on, you can kind of see it, but there's, I'm working on a hinge system. It's all motorized except for the chin. Still working on that. The lights work and there's even, um, there's two lights right up here. So when it closes, the lights turn off, but when it opens, there's a light, which I think is kind of cool. It's, it's kind of a unique touch. I haven't seen many people do it. Something you may have noticed that is uncommon for my helmet so far, this is not an independent helmet. Usually uh, helmets like my Mark 46 and my Mark 42, they have their own boards in them. This is completely dependent on my Jarvis system, which is why there's so many wires hanging out of this thing. It plugs directly into the Jarvis, which will be held in my chest. So there's, it's gonna be a whole complex system and I'll talk about that in a little bit, as well as point you towards some of my other videos that talk about this. Yeah, so it's it's a, it's a doozy. Um, I also haven't attached the back plate yet, so this is just kind of hanging here. <laughs> so now we're gonna go to the neck. Iron Man necks suck. I hate this thing. If you saw my test with pictures, if you saw the video, you can tell this thing is causing me a lot of pain. This is a neck brace. This is not a neck piece, it's a neck brace. I cannot, can't move my neck, can't turn my head. It's like right up to my jawline, stabbing and like skin tight. This is too small. I will be reprinting this. I will also, um, I'll be cutting along those individual lines and I'll probably be hinging it in some way. I'm thinking elastic just because I don't wanna go crazy 
with the design aspect of the neck, um, I don't want things stabbing me in my neck. That's not ideal. So we're not gonna be doing that. It's just gonna be elastic and padding. There's also another piece that's supposed to come up on this back that I haven't printed yet. And I'm debating if I even wanna print it because it doesn't seem practical. It's supposed to kind of fit in to the, the gap here. Uh, we'll, we'll see, I, I don't know. I might even just cast it out of rubber, which is another thing I'll be talking about soon. Just, just wait, wait, I have a lot to talk about. So now we are making an even bigger jump. We're talking about the chest plate here. Everything you see right now is detachable. It's all just taped together for test fit purposes and just like placement. I was messing with it for um, motorization fitting and, and uh, just seeing how everything fits together. But um, I'll take it apart really quick so I can show you what's going on here because it's it's kind of crazy. Not I'm not saying like, I'm not trying to brag by saying it's crazy. I'm saying it's literally crazy. Like this is a disaster zone right here. There's so many things going on. I don't even, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. It's okay, everything's fine. Oh, shh, shh. okay. Don't say that, that's a bad word. What is this? What did I do? What did you do, Kira? All right, so chest plate. So situation with this originally there was supposed to be more of a backing to this hole and i modeled it weird like i sculpted it and so the mesh didn't exist basically it was just a mesh it had no depth now it's just a big hole which honestly i don't mind because it kind of shows like the inner details through it a little bit more and i can play with like lighting like i can put some leds in there which i plan on doing if you look right here here and here um those are holes and they're also identical on the other side i'm gonna put leds through those um, they're gonna blink and flicker and stuff and uh as well as there's a little reed switch right here and that's gonna have a, there's gonna be a magnet on the inside of this this plate so when i put it on it's gonna hit that reed switch and the lights are gonna change or turn off or whatever i program them to do so it'll it'll be like a really interactive suit which is what i really wanted my mark 42 to be unfortunately it didn't really work out so perfect opportunity so with this panel kind of took some liberties here while also trying to stay as true to the design as possible um you can see all the sculpted details um the holes as well as like the dents and stuff which i could have heat formed in but i just kind of wanted to play with blender blender's fun this is um acrylic plastic it's um frosted so see how you can kind of only halfway see through it this is not enough to diffuse the arc reactor light um you can see the circle and I don't really like that. So I actually have some, um, I don't remember what this is called. Um, Future Kira, can you please edit in what this is called? Thank you. But this is gonna help diffuse it. It's just gonna go right behind it. Also kind of makes it look um, more like a frosted glass. And I kind of like that. It still doesn't diffuse it perfectly, but it's a little bit better. Um, I've had people DM me and tell me to put like an, uh, uh, what's it called? EL panel. To put like an EL panel on the inside or um, put like, lights on the top and while that's a really good idea i don't want to do that it just feels it doesn't feel authentic enough if that makes sense like i really want it to be lit by the art corrector so i think i'm gonna try to make this work and and we'll just we'll go from there and we'll see so here is the main chess piece you can see it, it's already one big piece but it's not that's that's the cool part if you've been here for a while you know i made that mark 42 you know i i really like exoskeletons it doesn't feel right to not have any kind of exoskeleton like i know the inner details here but i didn't model it that's do3d so i need to i need to do something you know so i'm creating like some kind of like it's like a half exoskeleton um so right now there's only brackets on the inside you can see it's they're right here you can see where they're screwed in on both sides that way these panels are removable you can see the screws. I just think, I think it, it not only does it make me feel better because welding these together would make me really nervous, but for whatever reason, if something breaks and, and for like the coolness factor, I have like removable plates, but yeah, that's, that's, that's part of the design as of right now. And same thing's going to happen with these armholes. I had to actually scale these a ton. You lose a lot of the design on the bottom, but I need more armhole space. Like it fits all right. It's, it's better than it was before. And then I also have the these uh, the armhole backs. I haven't taken the the brims off yet. I'm, I've been really busy, so I haven't had a chance to really work on this. It's scratching me. You get the idea. I can't do it with one hand. Ow. Oh, okay. So yeah, the, the armholes are gonna be screwed in to uh both this panel and this panel and yeah we're just gonna have a bunch of different like you know modular parts because i like that that's cool that's an iron man suit in here 
we have this beautiful arc reactor. Printed it on my King Rune KP6 mono resin printer, a uh, little plug. It's a great little printer. There is a missing little piece right here where it, um, it lifted, but I'm okay with it. I don't really care. And that's gonna get painted silver when I'm done. The lights are already installed. It runs with the Jarvis. There's a plug in here that just plugs into the Jarvis, which will be mounted on the inside here somewhere. I'm still designing like a, a holder for it, but once again, still in, in the process of being designed. This arc reactor is removable. That's, that's a staple in my builds now. I need the arc reactor to be removable. It adds a level of authenticity. Um, but one thing before I put this away, just kind of taped all these pieces together, but you can see where they're sliced right there. Um, I kind of sliced it along the same line as this line as well. You'll also notice out in the abs, it's all sliced down the side. So everything just kind of connects down that same line, nice and clean connection points. This'll fit right about here. And this is where it gets really complicated and we'll get into this like right now. If you follow me on, um instagram and tiktok you saw my posts about this i believe i also posted it on my youtube channel as well a version of it at least this is the mechanized missile pod system you could see the the flaps that i was just talking about this is a prototype and i went through multiple different prototypes to get to this point and this still isn't even close to where i want to be for starters this missile pod launch system you can see this whole part right here is supposed to be shifted this way underneath this flap because this flap slides forward like like this to make room for this missile pod to lift up like this it also does um lift vertically so it'll it'll lift a good amount fitting this into the suit is going to be really hard due to the the depth that this piece goes um i'm actually working on a new prototype for that as well. Um, I'm redesigning this entire sliding mechanism just because it's a little tight. And when I when it slides down, it kind of gets stuck and there's like a few things that just kind of go wrong. Yeah, this is just a prototype. It's gonna get so complicated when I get to actually like motorizing all of this, this entire suit. I have to mount this entire system like above my shoulder. And you can see it is like really, really, really like it's, it goes too far down. So we're gonna have to redesign this. Now we get to the back. It's just one big panel for right now. And it is super flimsy. You can kind of see it's got some bend to it. I will be either fiberglassing or making some kind of exoskeleton like brace system on the inside. Probably actually both, but there will be some kind of exoskeleton system in this back piece because I also want these detail pieces to be modular. You can see the detail piece here. This is something I designed myself. If you get the DO3D model, it does not look like this. The entire back is one piece. The The flaps are not cut out. While it is a pretty decent model, that's, that's annoying. I did a tutorial video on how to cut these panels out. Put that right here. Uh, if you wanna try that out yourself, take a look at this video. This is my last Mark VI update video where I talk about the panels I cut out, but this is what it's looking like so far. I have this piece printed out. I just haven't uh, melted it together and uh, taped it in. Um, the challenge with this is going to be, oh God, there's a lot of challenges. <laughs> One of the main challenges is how do I keep this closed? Do I design a system? Do I just use buckles? Um, it's all up to like what I feel like doing, like what I think is worth it. So we'll have to get kind of testy with that. And when it comes to motorization for this thing, this is gonna be a hefty job. We have multiple wing panels. We have like this main piece. We have the smaller pieces that I still haven't taken off their rims. And then we have, you know, like the big, the big missile flaps that come up as well as the missile pods. So there's a lot to motorize in this, this torso piece. It's going to be really intense. What I did was I started planning ahead. So there's these little, these, uh, they're called tie rods, I believe. They're for RC, RC cars for like servos. And they're like, kind of like pulleys kind of push pull systems and these tie rod connectors these basically screw they, they come off these, these little pieces right here and what i'm going to do is build like these little hinge pieces so these will be the supports for the main back wings there's going to be two each i think there's also going to be like these metal steel rods that help that that are like mounted to the servo at the top so when the servo turns and lifts the wing up it's gonna pull that rod with it and help pull these up. And then I'll use wing servos for the connecting wing that you know goes to the main wing. So it's it's really hard to explain. Um, I don't have a visual yet, so I can't really show you what I mean. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, so now we get to 
the cod piece and the abs. So this is actually separate systems. Um, you can see the strapping on the inside. This basically connects so it's mobile. That way I can kind of go like... Actually, over the last couple days, I thought of a really interesting idea for the abs. So we have this piece right now. Um, it's actually taped shut just because it's so, um, like, wobbly. The elastic and the Velcro will stay the same, but I'll probably make it go vertically instead of horizontally. Uh, as for this, this is going to stay the same. The one thing, though, that I want to change is the actual, like, front plate. So here's the front plate. Um, you can see it's one piece, which is not what I want. Now, originally, I sliced these two pieces off, and they're connected with elastic. This is not gonna be stable when I'm like walking around. I don't wanna have to be adjusting it. It's not gonna look good. It's gonna wobble, it's gonna look fake. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 3D print and design, or design and 3D print, um, some kind of like hinge mechanism, like a sliding mechanism. So basically, if I lean back, it kind of pulls like this, and then uh, probably cut out this inset and just like print like some flat panels that I can just heat form to the inside. That way it creates like a lip still. They're longer, so they cover more space. So they, they give me that overlap when they extend. As well as I want them to fold over each other like this, um, which I don't think is totally out of the question. Um, I think where I went wrong with my Mark 42 is that I tried to make the side ab pieces. It's, it's not impossible, but it's not easy. So my approach, will be to cut this uh, third panel out as well, and then um, create a hinge system. And then this piece will be directly welded and um, connected to the rest of like the waist piece. So it'll just be one front piece, one back piece with these um, ab plates just connected in a succession so they can like fold and extend. Hip discs. Can't say I'm a huge fan of the lip on this. I may be redesigning these. Um, I kind of want a piece and that like rotates like have the centerpiece rotate or something. But I will be cutting these holes out and putting lights in them. These will just be strapped to the cod like this, you know, lots of mobility, as well as probably a strap to the thigh as well, just so they stay in place. But the fit is really nice on these, so uh, I might just stick around with them for a while. So now we're gonna move to the, the biceps and the shoulders. Um, this is just taped, just, it was for the test fit. You can see strapping again. Uh, it doesn't fit because it doesn't fit very well because I'm wearing a flannel. So you can see here, it's a little rough. I had to cut an arm hole for this thing, like an arm bend, because this thing was like, no joke. It was like flat. And I was like, how are you supposed to fit your arm? Like it's gonna, it's gonna stab. It was going down way too far on my arm. So I had to cut it. And I think I'm gonna have to cut it a bit more because it still goes way too low. That, that could be improved, that's, that's weird. As for the shoulders, um, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna connect these to the torso yet because there are like a million servos gonna be in my shoulder. So um, this is gonna be a big mystery. Got a lot of padding in there, so it stays in place. The padding is mainly on this side, which is the outside of my arm because I want it to be really tight um, on the inside. So that way it doesn't shake, like it doesn't slide towards my torso and like scratch up the torso. The forearms aren't done as you can see and I don't have them to show anyway. Um, I'll figure out that hinge system later. I have to figure out an exoskeleton system for the inside because there's gonna be like seven motors for the uh, missile pods in there as well as the big forearm uh, missile. So I haven't even started those yet. I'm debating if I wanna even print the shell first just to see how it fits and see how much room I have. Moving on, just got a basic palm. Uh, this was, I believe, Walsh 3D. I think I like the scale, but I think I could also go a little bit smaller. But I actually don't remember the scale I printed this at, which is a problem. Pretty decent scale. The fingers are always a hard part because I want to actually be able to move. I may end up just like sanding this down a bit more so I have more space to bend because you can see it's stabbing right here. And then the other problem that Iron Man cosplayers run into, flipping their arm back to do like, you know, the repulsor thing, they usually can't flip back all the way because the back plate hits their like arm and their wrist and it prevents them from moving. So I'll probably just cut that out and then uh, hinge the hand plate so I can I can have 
full range of movement. I'm gonna skip the legs for right now and move straight to the boots. This is a very, very early version of the boots. Um, you can see that it's taped together right here. I have an elastic system on the inside. These are boot covers. I finally succumbed to boot covers. I have struggled in 3D printed boots for too long. They are painful, they break. I don't know, like maybe maybe eventually I'll figure out the, the secret recipe for like working boot. This, this piece is hinged um, and this is why it's taped because the elastic broke. So I have to find a better way to hinge this. And then there's also like an elastic strap right here that just fits over the shoe. Same right here. Um, and that's all the movement. Um, it gives me a really, really awesome range of movement though. But what I'm gonna do is probably slice it like right here and then make this back piece a separate part, probably right where this heel meets because it is really hard to try to put your shoes on when you can't reach in. Last but not least, the legs. Legs are difficult. If you know anything about my Mark 42 build, I'm just gonna be referencing this suit all the time. If you know anything about my Mark 42 build, it went horribly wrong. You know why? Legs. Make sure you do the legs first. I actually did that this time and these work like a charm so I'll, I'll do a close-up of what this system entails in a second but you can see look at the, the knee joint they line up perfectly and the knee is taped on right now and that's because I haven't attached it to the hinges but it will rotate so it covers the knee when it bends it'll kind of move with the suit so it'll look perfectly in place and what I plan on doing for the legs is casting casting a piece at the top and at the back out of rubber so designing a piece and making like a negative out of it and then pouring rubber and making a cover. So you can't see my legs. I'm gonna do that with the armpits as well, the arm joints. I think it'll add like a level of authenticity, like I like to say. So yeah, that's the basis of the leg. And then we have these leg flaps, which are just elastic on. Same thing with the back. So these are just metal hinges. Um, this one extends because it was, a, it was a mobility problem. When I was trying to walk, it was too tight when it was like this. So I needed it to extend when I um, straightened my leg out or bent. I call them Chicago screws. I don't really know what they're called, but they are unscrewable. And these are just metal pieces that I bent to the exact shape of the legs and hot glued in. When I am done, they will be fiberglass because I don't trust the hot glue 100%. There is one last thing I would like to talk about before I end this video, and that is a custom harness I built for this suit. And I haven't done a harness in a long time, actually. Uh, this is, this wasn't a harness. I actually just strapped the legs to the actual cod piece, which does work, but I feel like for 3D printing and something to this scale, um, this, this is foam for context. For a 3D printed suit, I would like to have something a little bit more sturdy to hold it up because it is a bit heavier. It's uh, red strapping for right now, just because it'll match the, it'll match the color better than black. But yeah, here's the concept. Basically all it does it just fits in like this, so I put my arm through, put it over my head, and then this buckle right here just straps here. And so it's tight enough around my waist. If you pull with both, it kind of helps distribute some of the weight on my waist. And there's also elastic here, um, so it's not like suffocating me. So basically this plugs into the front of the thighs, and then this piece plugs into the back of the thigh. And this is just nylon. This entire strap is, uh, this entire strapping system is nylon. Um, including this but this is elastic so you can see it stretches and this is because i did a test fit with just a thigh on and i could not bend my leg with the non-elastic strapping on the on my butt it's fine when it's in the front because i'm not really kicking back like this as much but when you try to go like full um full 90 degree bend you can't you can't if i'm standing here and the thigh piece is on see how it bends see how i'm keeping my my hand right here it's bending around my butt it, and then the stretch pulls it back up when it's done bending so it's a really nice system it's worked so far for the test fit we'll have to see what happens when the suit is more finished but as of right now um this is the harness system i have so yeah that's about it um that's what i have so far what i haven't talked about is the jarvis system if you want more information on that i do have a jarvis video up it's it was filmed a really long time ago but most of the stuff still applies. So if you want more, I did mention in this video, I'll put a link in the description as well as my Mark VI last video. Um, if you want to catch up on that, I hope this gave you some ideas. I hope this um, answered some of your questions about my suit and uh, hope you stay tuned for the next possible update, hopefully coming soon. I plan to have the suit done, I think for Silicon in August, the end of August. Cross your fingers, let's hope I can do it. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.